Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We're bringing Rick West back on the line, and he is co-founder over at Field Agent and also author of one of the most recent book releases, Mission Matters book releases and our, our Business Leaders Edition. And Rick, I just want to say, hey, first, welcome back. And I'm so thrilled to have you back on the show. Adam, it is great to be here. Can't wait to have our chat today. Oh man. So uh, the Amazon effect for those that don't know what that is, and also maybe haven't caught some of our, our previous work that we've done with Rick, you're in for a treat. So especially if you're in that, in that B2B space out there and looking for ways to get to market and ways to connect, ways to do new things, Rick is, Rick's going to take us into what that looks like. But before we get into that, Rick, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Rick, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Rick, what mission matters to you? I think for us is, is really making sure that we can integrate our whole self into the work that we do every single day. And Adam, as you and I have talked, is that no one wants to come in at 20%, 30%. It's really integrating everything in. And so if we do things right at Field Agent, it's not about the product. It's not about the service. It really is about that engagement so that people can not only be successful in life, but also be significant. Mm -hmm. And we think you can be significant across the table from someone when you bring your whole self into work. So that's what we're focused on here. Great, great having you back on the show. Love bringing mission-based uh, entrepreneurs and executives on the line to share their to share their story. So, speaking of your story, for those that didn't maybe catch the first episode that we did or some of the previous work, I do want to spend a little bit of time on on Field Agent before we go into the book and really just yourself as an entrepreneur. So, like, how did you get on this journey to to creating Field Agent? I'm one of these, uh, these corporate guys that was in the corporate America at Procter and Gamble for about 17 years was on an expat assignment and uh, really trying to figure out what I was going to do next and knew I didn't want to necessarily go back to HQ, the home office, and had an opportunity to start a small business here in Northwest Arkansas with a couple of buddies from P&G. From that, we had a 12-year overnight success story <laughs> with the birthing of this thing called Field Agent. I, mean, we were, I was managing five LLCs, mm. all these companies, trying to make something stick, right? As an entrepreneur, you've got all these lines in the water. And I want people to think back to 2010. Now, this is pre-selfie days, yeah. right? No front-facing camera, no video. And the iPhone 3S had just come out. It was the mm -hmm. rate, two megapixel camera, amazing phone, right? Amazing yeah. phone. And we were trying to determine how could we use that technology to capture data or insights inside of us. The business model at that time was download an app, click on an ad. Mm -hmm. And we thought with millions of people with a smart device in their hand, intuitively, could we pay them to do something? Mm -hmm. And we realized that no one was doing that, Adam. And mm -hmm. we like to tell folks that when we launched in April of 2010, we were the first app on iTunes to pay cash, which is crazy, <laughs> crazy. We launched two months before this little company called Uber. So we were mm -hmm. the very first crowdsourcing app involved. And uh, once we realized we had some traction there, we sold or got rid of five LLCs mm -hmm. and went down the path of field agents. So that's kind of my... 12 year success story. And now we've been on the journey for another 12. First amazing story. Every time I hear it, I'm like, come on, like, really? <laughs> like, like you were, you were way ahead of your time, really. And, and, and that's where this question comes from, because, you know, there'll be some people that'll watch this, that they have ideas, right. And they're mm -hmm. ahead of their time. And I'm guessing when you now telling the story and looking back, it's obvious, right? It's like, oh, of course, that's a great idea. But I'm guessing like when you first kind of had that idea, when you first proposed it, and when you first started going down that path, maybe not everybody said, oh my gosh, Rick, this is the most amazing thing ever. Like, tell us a little bit more about those early days. Yeah, so think about the early days, it was part education, part selling the concept. So sure. from a business standpoint, Adam, if you're in the business world at that time, mm -hmm. you had a Blackberry. Now on the personal side, you, you probably had a flip phone or a razor, one of those really cool phones. Yeah. iPhones were just coming in. And so I literally would be talking to an executive at a retailer or a CPG company. Mm -hmm. They would hold the phone and say, well, Rick, how do you train someone to use the camera? And then I said, well, once they take the photo, how do they download the photo from the camera to the computer to send <laughs> you the photo? Now for us, we're just poof, it's mind blowing. But, but in those days, 
it was that type of conversation. So not only were we selling a concept of yeah. capturing near real-time data inside of a store, so there's no recall mm -hmm. at that point of influence, I also had to educate an entire infrastructure yeah. that this could work, which is really what got us into the whole Amazon effect because we feel like we're not only talking about the product, but I'm having to educate all over again. This is deja vu to yeah. that end because you have to take your time to educate, to bring people along because it's, it's such a big stretch. But I'm telling you, Adam, once they get it, mm -hmm. it's like injecting something in your arm. They yeah. got it. And so it, it, I'm just feeding people now. And so it's so intuitive, which is the exciting part about what we do today. How do you keep the team together during these times? Like as you're, like, as you said, you had, you had a couple, you had multiple things, managing multiple LCs, right. you, you find the direction like that you, you met, you handled the question, let's say externally, but maybe even internally, like how do you keep the team together and focused on that process? Yeah. I mean, you, you can't stay focused on you know necessarily one thing forever. You have to yeah. evolve to some degree, but I'm pretty much a rails kind of guy to the degree we can, we don't chase shiny objects, but mm -hmm. our rails are here but rails do go a little bit left and right that continue to broaden as we go. And so the company as the employees, I heard Craig Groeschel, who's a, a pastor, but also a leadership guy, talk about the unsettling that's happening today is that people want to feel settled. So it's my job as the CEO visionary mm -hmm. to keep these exciting rails going and slightly broad while yeah. people feeling settled, yet at the same time, making sure they understand that aspirationally, we're doing something that's really, really exciting. And that's kind of hard to balance today because of, you know, post COVID and the, the, inf you know, inflation, the, the, mm -hmm. the environment that we're dealing from an economic standpoint today. Mm -hmm. So if I can keep one hand on that cadence of settled, settled, we're driving down this really cool path. And the other hand of aspirational going forward, that's mm -hmm. how I'm managing things today. Now I'm not perfect at it. There's still <laughs> a lot of unsettling that's happening around us. But that's our new cadence right now, settled with aspiration in front of you. So let's just dive right into the book. So the Amazon yeah. effect, what, what was the inspiration behind this and, and introducing this to our audience? Yeah, the more people that we engaged from a, a client perspective or just industry, industry experts, I come from the B2B world and all people want to talk about is that really cool B2C thing called Amazon, yeah. that really B2C thing called Shopify or, or pick a thing, right? It's that B2C. Mm -hmm. And B2B is really like that sluggard, slow thing. Well, your agency and services mm -hmm. and no one thinks it's cool. Yeah. And we started asking ourselves the hard question, Adam, is that why can't a services, B2B services company mm -hmm. be able to create products and be able to engage their end consumer or end user mm -hmm. in the same way that an Amazon engages? And it was really mm -hmm. difficult to do. Over the last two years, as we investigated this, a cool B2B engagement for e-commerce is click and go to a salesperson or click and go to a demo. Mm -hmm. But we all know Gen Z, X, Y, Z, I mean, you pick a generation and, and that's been used to dealing with Amazon. Yeah. They're coming in from a world that says everything in my personal life is self-education, self-selection. Mm -hmm. But when I switch to B2B, I have to call someone to have them spoon feed me and educate me over multiple meetings. Yeah. And the epiphany happened to us is when I was talking to a client who said, I already know what you do. Can't you just let me buy it? I said, well, sure. Let me get you to a salesperson. Then we're going to onboard you. And he's like, I just, I just want to buy a rating yeah. some review, Rick. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Adam, <laughs> we should set that up. So fast forward through COVID, we now have productized a portion of our business mm -hmm. so that the everyday person can have an Amazon experience, which is click, mm -hmm. go to a product, self-educate, mm -hmm. okay, self-select, click a few buttons and go to a cart and check out. And it mm -hmm. has revolutionized our business. Yeah. Let, let's stick on this, on this, on, I want to kind of juxtapose maybe okay. like, yeah. the, like the current process versus the, versus what, what hopefully is being done to, to, to inch people around that maybe I, I hate to say stuck in their ways. Right. But a lot of people right. do the education process to the, to the, why it makes sense to self-educate process. Right. <laughs> Did I say that right? I don't know, but, uh, right. but let's juxtapose those two. So current process versus your process. Yeah, I think in the in the business world, we often talk about fast nickels and slow quarters. Yeah. Okay. Your business either fast nickels, you sold 20 nickels this week, or you yeah. sold four quarters that both equal to a hundred. 
So what happens in, in our world, there are some clients that are slow quarters. Rick, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy 10,000 of these. I want a customized experience. I want to be able to engage. And so the mm -hmm. B2B world, everyone's chasing after those quarters. Everyone wants that big, big deal. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other 95% of the population is not being serviced. They can't get access to your product. It's mm -hmm. not worth it for you to dip down to engage them because they're a nickel. Yeah. So what Amazon has said is that, hey, if, if you're going to buy 100 TVs, you want a customized experience, you can go direct to the manufacturer and buy 100 mm -hmm. TVs because you're going to buy them for your company. Yeah. But if you're going to buy one TV and I want 100 individuals to buy one TV, just yeah. click and buy. Yeah. So in the B2B world, that same thing happens is that there are large clients that need the customized approach, mm -hmm. but the other 90 to 100,000 customers mm -hmm. that are out there buying B2B services, mm -hmm. they just want the same type of experience, which is self-educate, buy, mm -hmm. and move forward. And so that's the that's the fight that we have today. Now, it'll never be 100%. I think you and I mm -hmm. joked about this before, is that when the Kindle came out and the iPad came out, mm -hmm. there would never be another book printed. 100% mm -hmm. is always going to be read on a Kindle or you know, an iPad. And what did we find out? About 70% of copies of books still printed, 30% over here. I think that's going to happen in the B2B world. I think mm. we're going to see a point where 5, 10, 20, 30% of our revenue mm. is coming in a B2B kind of Amazon effect. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be that 70% out there that will be custom in nature. And so yeah. those are the opposing forces that are fighting today. Legacy mm. chasing after big deals and everyone that wants to be a part of it, and you're gonna to have to productize it and, and create the Amazon effect. And really, if you think about like some of these, let's just say the, the nickels as you as you referred to it out there and, and that, that mass that are not being served, it's not that somebody doesn't want to, it's just the economics of it, right? Like oh. you only have so many salespeople that you can that you can that you can hire. And if they're spending all their time on maybe a, on a smaller client or somebody that just doesn't have a, a, as big of a need for your product as that larger one, the economics don't ju they just don't right. work out. So historically, so it's not that anybody that wants to neglect it, it's just historically there really hasn't been that that other option to where you know the the smaller or the person that's only going to buy you know x amount it's a smaller order if it seems to me like if you were creating that that online experience or that self education process or whatever that looks like it seems to me that like it's going to be it, it has a, a lot of potential there to pick up additional revenue additional sales because they're not being serviced by the majority anyway so they're probably like many times you know they might be calling around or doing other things trying to get their needs met not always getting the best user journey as well am i kind of off on that or is that make sense you're exactly right. The, we used the, uh, the example for us was uh, Zoom. Yeah. Pandemic hits. I mean, I mean, Zoom had about 20 million users roughly, mm -hmm. and they went from 20 million to two, 200 million wow. in a matter of months. And mm -hmm. instead of selling into corporate entities and trying to get 20 users or 100 or 1,000 users, they had hundreds of thousands of individuals that all mm -hmm. needed to buy. And Adam, there were zero phone calls. Yeah. Okay. There's zero engagement because they were able to scale at mass to go from 20 to, to 200 million. I saw a study once that said if Amazon had to make phone calls, they would have needed 100,000 people working 10 hours a day for 10 years to go from 20 million to 200 million in the same process. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's really what we're talking about here is that I'd love for my company, Field Agent, mm -hmm. to be able to service the hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. but I can't scale the hundreds or thousands of people that it would take to take phone calls. Mm -hmm. Now, we use the Amazon effect as a person that buys a product from my company that's that's $1,000. Mm -hmm. Well, Rick, I'm spending $1,000. I need to talk to someone. Well, you go to Amazon and buy TV. And when you click on the TV, mm -hmm. Amazon doesn't say, well, tell you what, Adam, I'm going to connect you with a technical salesperson. Yeah, and they're going to walk you through your options and you say, great, I'm ready to buy. No, we're going to now give you to a yeah. sales guy who's going to explain to you how to use the TV. We're going to give, give you to a three hurdles, right? And, and, and take your time. Yeah. And take your time. And someone says, Rick, but these are for hundreds of thousands. We, we had a, a client Lego that spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars just simply by click, click, as opposed yeah. to talking to someone and your friends buy a Tesla. And mm -hmm. we have people today, you, you know, these people that during the pandemic, 
bought a house sight unseen by mm. doing a virtual tour online and spent three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But but Adam, you don't understand, Rick. This is a business thing. I'm going to spend ten thousand dollars with you. I need three meetings over three weeks. Mm. It's just not realistic. And so the day is coming that this new group of users that have grown up on Amazon are going to demand that businesses allow people to self-educate and self-select. And without Mm. it, I think you're going to miss out. For those that aren't familiar with it, what could a, you know, self-education process look like from the context of either using the platform and, or, you know, getting from that person discovering your product on on the unfield agent to actually purchasing? Yeah, I think from a process standpoint, us is what we've learned over the years. We'll take a, a product that we have as a ratings and review. Mm-hmm. If you've got a product today and you want to have ratings and review, you're, you're trying to, to get to 50 to 100 mm-hmm. and you don't want to go out and buy the fake reviews. You want real ratings and reviews. Yeah. So you need to engage a company like ours to be able to have someone buy the product, try it, mm-hmm. do a ratings and review. Well, again, that shouldn't really take multiple weeks because I'm telling you, Adam, there's only so many ways to buy a product, try yeah. it, write a ratings and review. And there's only so many questions you have to ask. So what we've done on our hundreds of products, we've mm-hmm. got our 30 best selling. And that's what I would tell any business services company today is that whether it's an agency that does marketing work or a PR mm-hmm. company, if you're looking for a basic press release or a basic marketing help or SEO, mm-hmm. you've been in the meetings. It's the same questions. Yeah. You know the core questions. And so everyone should be able to take a very small piece of their business, mm-hmm. productize it, so that the masses get a taste. And you and Adam, you and I both know what we're hoping for. Yeah. They get a taste and then they want the big ticket and we're going to mm-hmm. get on the phone and we're going to treat them with kid gloves, give them amazing mm-hmm. service. And then we're going to sign the $100,000 deal. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens today in the B2B world, there are no $1,000 opportunities. There's no mm-hmm. $5,000 opportunities because you can't afford it because of your overhead. So that's yeah. what happens in our world. You come in, you see these opportunities to win at retail, Mm -hmm. you find an audit, you find a research, you do mystery shopping, whatever it is. I'd like to try it. You mean I can try it for $25? Yes, you can. Click, click, try for $25. You love it. You buy more or you engage us. We kind of go from there. So self-selection, self-education is the key. And you've got to eliminate all of these hurdles to make it as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. So I, what, what type of, what type of businesses right now are succeeding on field agent or kind of like what kind of breakdown or industries are appropriate to, to use field agent overall? Yeah, if you look at our channel or the, our ICP, kind of how it breaks out about 75 to 80% of the people that engage us are brands. So mm. it's, a, it's a Unilever, SC Johnson, you know, Kraft, mm. it's those type of companies that other 20 to 30% based on the month would either be a retailer Mm-hmm. So a Walmart, Target, Whole Foods, a quick serve restaurant. So, yeah. you know, Papa John's, Little Caesars, you know, McDonald's, mm-hmm. you know, those type of companies. And then we've got a host over here, another 5% or so that are agencies. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, these are people that need to succeed at retail. Mm-hmm. They either need a very quick understanding of information at retail. They want shoppers to engage, provide insights yeah. of mystery shopping, or they want to do marketing. And they want to do so at scale. And we provide that scale and make it very, very easy for them to gauge us. From the product standpoint, just for those that haven't been on field agent or otherwise, like what just, you know, a mix. I know there's a ton of products in the marketplace, right, right. but a mix, like give us a little breakdown on that. Yeah. So I tell people that if, if you're a retailer or a consumer products group you know, mm-hmm. company, consumer products goods, you'll never have to leave your home again. <laughs> to understand what truth looks like at retail. So if you're sitting like, where are you based right now, Adam? LA, yes. Mm-hmm. You're in LA. Mm-hmm. And let's say that you have products in a store in Miami. Yeah. I can tell you in a matter of hours what your competition's doing. I can send mm-hmm. you photos of the display and the, and the pricing. Mm-hmm. I can have somebody shop it and tell you what your core consumer in Miami thinks about it. Mm-hmm. And I can have someone in Miami buy and try a product And none of that requires you to hire an agency, no contract. None of that requires you to travel. You say, well, Rick, that's Miami. I said, well, okay, let's say that you're doing work with Walmart and -hmm. you want to have a picture of 4,000 stores. Mm -hmm. I can get that for you in a couple of days. And do you know what truth looks like across 4,000 stores? And you're not flying over trying to make things work. So we provide amazing coverage. Mm -hmm. Every zip code in the United States and North America, 
cost were pennies on the dollar and speed, I can get you data in near real time. Hmm. And so that's the type of work that we pro or, or data that we provide folks. So whether you're an entrepreneur that has two items or here is a funny one for you, Adam, let's say that you have a, a house in Florida and you hmm. rent out the house and they complain because the grass hasn't been mowed for the sake of arguing. Yeah. You call the contractor. You said, oh, Adam, I, I mowed the grass yesterday. You yeah. go to a field agent and this afternoon I'll have somebody drive by, take a picture of the yard, showing the, showing the, the ag actual address. Hmm. You look at the picture. It's time date stamped. The grass is too high. You call the contractor and you fire them. You said, well, why'd you yeah. fire me? I mowed the grass yesterday. He said, huh, <laughs> I've got a real time photo today that shows it hasn't been mowed. You're fired. I mean, it's that yeah. type of detail and speed that blows people's minds. Yeah, that is that that is unbelievable. And for the individuals that are that are are using field agent to to make purchases, um, you mentioned some you know pretty big companies. Is it like like who's appropriate to use the marketplace for for buying? Yeah, I think a couple of things in there is that I'm probably one of the few guests you've ever had on that can actually pay people that are listening. I can pay them money. So for the user standpoint, if you download mm -hmm. the app, I'm going to pay you real money to buy and try a product to buy pizza for Little Caesars, go buy pizza and try it today, tell me what you think, or to buy products or to engage. Yeah. But for the everyday person that has products at retail, mm -hmm. the worst thing you can do is ask your mom or dad or your friend what they think. And you know what they're gonna tell you, Adam? Is that yeah. your baby is beautiful. You have yeah. the cutest baby. And we all know that babies look like aliens until about three months, right? <laughs> they're always ugly. Well, what we do is that we send in core consumers mm. and they're gonna tell you the truth. They're not your friend. And they're going to tell you your product doesn't taste good. It's not priced mm -hmm. right. The display looks bad. Mm -hmm. And most people, when they hire an agency, they're just going to take weeks or months to get the contract. Yeah. They're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars. By then, it's too late. The data is already old. Mm -hmm. And you can come in today, not talk to a human. And mm -hmm. tomorrow morning, come in and have 100 people tell you truth about your products at retail. Mm -hmm. That's the game changer that we offer. Yeah. So I, I want to jump around here a bit. So yeah. I do want to, I do want to, I, I understand you, you got some expansion going on, some other things yeah. like, tell, tell us a little bit more about that. You guys are moving. You know, this, we, we just acquired a company that's called Simply Field mm -hmm. and Simply Field think as a, as a, a parallel to our company, there are some retailers or CPG companies out there today that would say, well, Rick, I've already got my own team in the field. Mm -hmm. I'd love to use your field agent app to capture that, but I don't want to pay them because they're already on my payroll. Mm -hmm. Well, Simply Field comes in and says, our software will do that. So mm -hmm. we'll allow you to do checklists, to put together project lists, things that you'd mm -hmm. like your employees do. And you're simply doing a, it's a SaaS model. You're paying for a subscription mm -hmm. so that they can actually use and upload data via Simply Field. And we have kind of an Instagram feel. So we create mm -hmm. this community of engagement. So now you've got a, a rep in Miami and a rep in Dallas and one in Atlanta, and they're mm -hmm. showing best in case displays at a Saks Fifth Avenue or at a Whole Foods, and they're engaging like an Instagram, and you're seeing mm -hmm. real time data come in. So now for us, we cover the entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We have everyday consumers that you can use, you can use agencies, or you can use your employees, and we have a software that will allow you to capture data into your real time from stores. So mm -hmm. Simply Field's a great company. They're based out of Paris. They've been in the US for about a year now. So we're gonna obviously mm -hmm. focus on expanding here in North America. Yeah, it's great. It's a great story. And I, and I look forward to continuing to watch the yeah. growth that comes from that as well. And you, you know, I, I can't bring you on the show and, and, and without talking about your podcast, you already know what has to happen there. I mean, I mean, I'm a big fan. I've seen a couple episodes now. So push go podcast. I'm a big fan of just the podcasting community in general. And I've also seen it on your YouTube channel as well, which is just excellent production. Uh, what was the idea behind launching the show? You know, that when we start talking to, to people like you, Adam, and, and I have you know many friends of mine in this corporate world that we live in, and most and many of the podcasts that are out there, they want to talk about your latest business insight and mm -hmm. tell me about the, the latest idea here or there. And what you start to realize is that people would love to be able to also tell their story, in many cases, like mm -hmm. an origin story. Yeah. And what we've honed in on is the defining moment in someone's mm -hmm. life that impacted their work or career or personal life. Mm. And they can look back at it and point and say, this was the moment I decided to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. This is the moment that I decided I was going to launch a product. Mm -hmm. This is the moment that I was going to make a career change. 
And it's been so invigorating to hear people share their passion of saying, I had this doubt or I, I wasn't sure if mm -hmm. I could do X. And this moment through a mentor, this moment through an instant allowed yeah. me to push go, hence the name, push go. Yeah. And then I look back on it and I saw these people in my life that encouraged me and it forever mm -hmm. changed the trajectory. And what we want to encourage people when they listen to it, so I, I'd love for folks to, to mm -hmm. give us feedback on what they think, is that every person listening is either in the middle of, just mm -hmm. finished, or going into a defining moment in their life. And when you listen to these people tell you how they were able to navigate through it, I think it's going to encourage others to have the confidence to push go in their life and not look back and regret to look back and say, man, I'm glad I finally made that decision. And so we've got great inspiring stories that I hope are an encouragement to people that listen. Now, I know the stories that you're, that you're, that you're bringing out and the content that you're creating, it, it, you're, many times you're bringing out these pivotal moments, really, and that's what you're going for, these pivotal moments in someone's life. Are there any, and I've listened to a couple of them, but are there any stories that just stick out just to give the, just to give the audience a little bit of a flavor for what to expect? Because I definitely want them to go check it out. Any stories that stick out to you that you care to share? I'll tell a fun one. It's Janem Arkin. And she was talking of growing up overseas, grew up in Manhattan, Long Island, or Manhattan and, and New York. And she thought she was always going to be a Goldman Sachs, going to drive things. Her husband worked for Goldman. And out of nowhere, her husband said, hey, uh, I really think we need to move to the middle of the nowhere United States yeah. called this thing called Arkansas. <laughs> and I need to move. And what was pivotal in this moment is that people saw for Rick, people move all the time. Hmm. But her career and her trajectory, all of her mentors was on this track and she didn't want to do it halfway. And here was the deciding moment for her. Her husband said, if you give me three years, yeah. three years, I commit to you that on day one, after the three years, if you're not happy, I'll move anywhere in the world, do whatever you want to do. Can you, can you give me three years? And so she talked about just, there's this heavy object in your hand and you're saying, mm -hmm. I can't hold it forever but I can hold it for three years. And so what I found is people have called me and said, Rick, I've been noncommittal, whether it's a spouse or even my company asked me to do something hard. And I thought, you know, hmm. I can give it a year or two. So that hmm. defining moment of saying, I'm going to give her a period of time, changed her trajectory. And now it's been eight years since she's lived here and hasn't looked back. But she said, Rick, I had to be all in because I wasn't, hmm. I wasn't going to give it a fair shake. And so that defining moment of him using that term was so cool you know, to hear that. And I had a, a, another person and he had been successful his entire career mm -hmm. and was ready to take on the big VP role. And mm -hmm. he said, I'm ready to manage people. And his company's like, nah, not so much. Mm -hmm. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I'm killing it. He said, well, you are, but you're not really a team guy. You're not really a leader, but you're mm -hmm. kind of a, you know, attack guy. You're a, you're a sole proprietor. You're, you're, we're going to send you in as an assassin and go take care mm -hmm. of things. He said, for the first time in my career, I realized I had someone that told me I wasn't mm. successful at something. Wow. So he made a decision outside of work to get coaching, mm -hmm. to really focus on getting better. He said, Rick, I wasn't 19. He said, I'm in my 30s and my career mm. is going straight up. But I had hit a wall because I'd become so specialized as a sole proprietor that I mm. didn't really understand what it meant to lead. And then you fast forward five years later, I'm managing a team. I'm a vice president now. <laughs> I'm an amazing leader, but had I not had a boss tell me mm. that I was not good as opposed to, well, we'll just let him do it anyway. He said, I would have been miserable. I would have never been successful today. So those are a couple of examples of mm. folks that are just hitting these moments and look back and said, thank goodness I had a boss that told me I wasn't going to make it. Mm. And thank goodness I had a spouse that told me, just give me three years. Yeah. So I, I think I caught that first one. And if I'm not mistaken, they, they met at Goldman Sachs, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's yeah. correct. They met at Goldman Sachs, both on the career, on the trajectory mm -hmm. and said, man, this is exciting time. But she also realized that it was, uh, it was important for her mm -hmm. to give this a shot, you know, for a period of time. And so that part mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Yeah. So what is your vision for the show going forward? So I know you're, you started your, your many episodes in like, what's your vision or what's your hope for this, for the show going forward? Yeah. Well, what I think we're going to find over time, and we're already starting to see this bubble a little bit, you, you realize, and, and, and I don't have the, the, the data yet, Adam, so I'm, I'm a no. data guy. I'm going to get close. I know. Uh, I, think we're, <laughs> I think we're going to find there are probably 
five to seven categories of defining moments that we all experience. Hmm. Okay. There's a personal, either a tragedy or a success thing that happens in personal life. Mm -hmm. There's a crisis of, am I successful or not? Mm -hmm. There is a business thing that happens. I mean, there are these, these moments and whether Mm -hmm. you're 20 or you're 50, we all have these moments. And I think we're going to begin categorizing this so I can now say, gosh, I've got a whole playlist full of people that are really struggling with personal situations. Hmm. And I, I think we can actually have a grouping of things and, hey, I'm not really interested in the business defining moment. Mm-hmm. I'm struggling with kids at home or I'm struggling with a death in my family. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to be able to curate 5, 10, 15, 20 amazing stories mm-hmm. so that when someone has this going on in their life, they can zero in and listen to four or five podcasts and it get them over the edge. And yeah. that's kind of how I see this envisioning. I just don't know the three, five, seven categories yet, mm-hmm. but we're already starting to feel this crisis of faith, crisis of success, crisis mm-hmm. of family, or the lottery bus of family or the lottery bus that I hit mm-hmm. of success mm-hmm. that's kind of coming in. So I think it's going to be curated that way and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yes, we will. And I'm, I'm excited to be on this journey with you as a fan and, and listening to your show and seeing the content that comes out as well as witnessing the growth of field agent as well. But that being said, Rick, I mean, you got a lot going on, a- acquisition, podcast. We're going into 2023. I just have to ask what's next. What's next for you? What's next oh, for the company? We're trying to breathe. right. <laughs> so now, I, th- I think for the company, if, if we were having an investment meeting now and we we're talking to our mm-hmm. board or if I was talking to a private equity or VC firm, mm-hmm. we've I feel confident that I have an amazing management team right now. Mm-hmm. We are hitting on all cylinders. Uh, this acquisition has reinforced that. We've got the right team, the right marketing mm-hmm. funnel, everything driving. I think what you're going to see is let's continue to grow organically, but we're also going to have other the right type of M&A conversation. So that we continue to broaden our services for people to be to win at retail, to create almost kind of a hub or a marketplace of services that we own or services that we partner with so that we can be a one-stop shop. That If you want to win at retail, you go to the Plum Marketplace. You go into Plum, you'll see some field agent products. You'll see Simply Field. You'll see other products that are available there. And we really think we can be that one-stop shop for folks. And so you'll see that continue to change over the next little bit, which is really exciting for my team. Love my team. Yeah, that is exciting. And if somebody wants to follow up and connect and learn more or to follow your journey, and also, of course, to listen to the podcast, what's the best way for them to do that? You know, I'm a LinkedIn guy, much like you, Adam. LinkedIn's a good thing. You can always, you know, DM me direct there. I'm Rick West, the field agent guy, easy to find. But Regardless of the social media, whether it's it's LinkedIn or Instagram, YouTube, if you go to Plum Marketplace, most of what we do is underneath the Plum Marketplace umbrella. Obviously, mm-hmm. Push Go podcast on Spotify and Apple. Mm-hmm. You can hear and see what we're doing. But that's how folks can get a hold of us is go out to that Plum Marketplace environment. Obviously, if you hit Field Agent or Simply Field, it's going to lead you down that path as well. But I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. Wonderful. And we'll, we'll put all that information in the show notes so that yeah. our audience can just click on the links and check everything out. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging with an episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their background, you know, also their, their mission, their vision, their companies, and really what we can all learn and grow from by hearing their stories and their journey. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Rick, again, thank you for coming back on the show. I'm really excited to continue promoting this book with you and to just watch the rise of you and your company. So thanks again for coming on. Adam, as always, man, thanks for having me.